for we're going to start off with Lynn. Many international economists peg the $30 trillion debt mark as the point at which other nations begin to question the integrity and the solvency of the American dollar. With the current debt knocking on the door of $27 trillion, what should the federal government have to do to not only curb spending, but to begin to whittle down a debt of nightmare proportions? That's a great question, and thank God we have President Trump uh, because he's done a f tremendous job uh, working on the economy for this nation, and he's going to continue when he gets back in office in 2020 to continue to get us back on that road to a great economy. Um, so, go back to the question again. I just want to make sure I understand. So, I can, can I summarize, or do you want yeah, to? Yeah, summarize okay. it. Yeah. International economists have pegged the $30 trillion mark as the point at which other countries begin to question our solvency and the integrity of our dollar. So what do we need to do to whittle that down and deal with our debt crisis? So the great thing about President Trump is he's always got a long-term plan. And so, uh, you know, folks have thought, well, you know, his initial getting our, our, our economy kick-started really put us in debt. But, uh, you know, President Trump doesn't think about tomorrow. He thinks about 10 years and 20 years and 30 years down the road. And he's got a plan in place for that, for that success. And we should always be strategically planning with our budgets. We should always be looking down the road. Um, there are certainly ways we have got to cut spending in this country. Um, and I, you know, and I really want to be on the Science and Technology Committee because I want to pull the string on what happened in China. And I think we have an opportunity for reparations there as well um, when it comes to uh, what happened in China and, and the demise it had on our economy during that time uh, that we had, well, we're still sort of feeling it during this COVID crisis. But, um, you know, we've, you know, when you sit down and you look at the budget as a whole, or when you look about at our economy as a whole, you've got to look at all the areas that we can make make rooms for improvement, and we've got to, you know, we've got to live within our means. There's, it, you just can't, you can't spend out of your means, and we certainly debt and deficit spending isn't a way to go. And uh, so, I don't think we'll be borrowing from China anymore. And you know, I. It, I definitely uh, think that this president with his long-term plan has a, uh, an opportunity to get us back on track and with, a con with folks in Congress who understand you know, balancing budgets and understand fiscal conservatism, we will get this back on track. Thank you, Lynn. Steve? Thank you. Yeah, it's a problem. And when I ran in 2018, that was one of my number one priorities was to reduce the debt. And all of a sudden now, unfortunately, COVID comes around and we add on top of that. <laughs> Look, folks, this is going to be a painful process. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for anybody. You know, we have out-of-control spending, and we need to do something. My grandmother used to say something very famously. you got so many gazintas and so many gazadas. And right now, there's very little gazintas and a whole lot of gazadas. And we got to change that. And the point is, everything is on the table. There's no sacred cow. Everything. If we're going to turn this around, and I read a great report from the Heritage Foundation, is that we have to look at these things, and I know it scares people, we need to maintain some things that we have, but we cannot do debt reduction, we cannot get this country back online if we don't take a hard look at all the spending within the government. And when I say all, I mean Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security. I'm not saying get rid of it, so everybody, don't throw something at me. But what I am saying, it's a very simple equation, right? You look at how many people are putting into Social Security, and how many people are taking out. Our demographics of our country, you can't change that. We're an older country, and more people are taking out than people are putting in. It's a very simple equation, but we have got to stop spending. Now, Ann Custer won't agree to a bill regardless of the amount of money it's gonna cost. When we looked at this package that came out, this first rescue package for COVID, we all know the stories. All the money for these performing arts centers that had nothing to do with COVID. When I'm your congressman, it's gonna be a very simple litmus test for this. If it's not COVID related in this example, then it's not in there. But that's not what they do, right? They do it because they're trying to get reelected. Here's what I'm telling you folks, it's gonna be painful. Everybody's gonna to have to participate in it and we can, get, we can turn this around. Great opportunity out there, but everybody has to buy into this and I think we can do it, thanks. Thank you, Steve. Eli. 